Hey, what's going on, everybody? Mike Sparacino here alongside, as always, Brandon Mulroy and Brandon Woj for uh, Pucks and Brews. How you guys doing? Brandon, you're on mute. God damn it, I'm that guy. I'm yeah. that guy. Wow, starting episode seven off my number with a bang, Brandon. There you I was, go. I was going to say, Shades, I'm doing good. We got Woj is back from the upper body. So, uh, so undisclosed yeah, upper, upper body, upper upper body, body. Now we're, yeah, now we got a lower body injury. Yeah, we got a lower body injury, <laughs> but undisclosed. So he's not to, sticking you know. through it. But uh, boys are buzzing. Take them up yeah. for the team. And guys, for the second episode in a row, I have a cold brew. Woj, what unsponsored brew of choice did you just crack open? Because we heard it. I have a pussy McLoob Ultra Seltzer. <laughs> Keeping it low on the carbs. And I got not hammered expected. by myself last night. So, okay, I'll just take it slow. You did text us that you did get hammered last night, so... Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. It's well, I mean, after know? after the way that game went, I don't really blame you, so... Yeah, wasn't... Uh, I would have been happy if they allowed that Kevin Hayes goal, but, you know, they didn't because it was in all sides, but... Yeah, I, I know you been, had, you you had like $25,000 on that, too. Well, she just... You were just like, fucking, I'm going for it all, dude. Just riding it all on Hayes. Yeah, That's literally me. one thing. Like, if I could bet in New York, I would bet mm-hmm. I would bet Kevin Hayes assists or points or goals over every single time. Yeah, this guy, the best always, in the league. he always tears the Rangers up, dude. I swear. He gets at least one point every time he plays us. Dude, I was rooting for that goal to count for my fantasy team because I'm it's projected to get I'm projected to get like killed this week. Also, one quick note on Hayes, his mustache is absolutely disgusting. I don't know if you've yeah. seen it, but is it, is it worse than mine? It's shades. This is like porn stash from like the 70s. It's amazing. <laughs> Good man. Good man. He's got a he's got a Burt Reynolds thing going on. Yeah, it's it's great. Actually, speaking of facial hair, boys, enjoy the beard while you can because I gotta trim this either tomorrow or Thursday morning. Maybe the whole thing off. You look like Four. Jesus. <laughs> I might. I'm not going to go clean shaven, but significant. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, she just make a return to work after a year. Hey, well, I mean, hey, I worked five weeks from October to November. All right. Let's get the record straight here. This kid's had an entire year off. He's making his debut back at work. Holy shit. Yeah, gotta gotta look somewhat presentable, you know? Jesus. All right. Well, enough on the shades front. You want yeah, to uh, but, uh, hop into the uh, hockey talk, baby? Before we get into hockey talk, I would just like to welcome everyone once again to Pucks and Brews. Grab a favorite drink of your choice, whether it be a beer, wine, I don't know, coffee. Wine. Wait, whatever. hold up. Hold up your coffee again. Duncan Cold is that, Brew. Is that black? Do you have anything in that? No, it's great black. No, Shades, it's just a fucking maniac. Dude, you doesn't need anything. You want to take it. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, dude, here's the thing. Coffee. I try to drink nuts. it. It's awful. Dude, here's the thing. Like, when it's warm and straight black, I don't like it. But if it's cold like this, That's it's good. Because cold brew is sweeter. So I can actually stand the taste a lot more. I don't know. I don't like cold brew, honestly. It's a little bit of an acquired taste. I'll tell you. I'll say that. All right. But, uh... Everyone grab a favorite drink of your choice, whatever it may be. Sit back, relax, and listen to some hockey talking. Boys, speaking of uh, hockey, dude, NHL and ESPN, the, f- the connection is back. Mike, seven-year deal. First time that ESPN and the NHL are apparently the first time since 2004. So that's pretty insane. Um, I swear to, I swore that – I don't know why I was thinking that – I. So they haven't been on. They haven't been on ESPN since 2004, right? That's yeah, that's I'm pretty, pretty sure. Yeah, yep. I, I don't know why I thought that. Like there was like this game this one time. I don't know if you remember. It was with like it was when Lundqvist played his brother the first time. I don't know why I swore that was on ESPN, but that had to be in like 2006. It's probably so on guess, like versus or something. Yeah, that's probably what it was. It was probably versus. You're right about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm down in the notes here. I mean, there's a lot. They're gonna have a lot of hockey on ESPN. They say in 25 regular season games on ESPN or ABC, early round playoff series and one conference final from each year, uh, four Stanley Cup final series on ABC, and apparently there's gonna, there's gonna be more than 1,000 games streamed on ESPN Plus, and also Hulu will be the home to 75 ESPN produced exclusive telecasts per season. 
All I have to say is, Brendan, I uh, I gave you the info to my Netflix account. I'm hoping you can hook me up with your Hulu account so I can watch some of these games. <laughs> you know what? That so, would be, that's you know, illegal. You know that uh, I would actually do that, Shades, except that I don't have my own Hulu account. I use ah, some of the <laughs> I hook this kid up and he doesn't pay back well, the actually, favor. Actually, actually, Shades, I won't even be able to use your Netflix account anymore with this update that they're doing. So, well, yeah, You guys are committing several felonies. Well, it's not like I use it. so You definitely use it. Not, all right. not really. I, I've it's maybe fine. used my Netflix once the past year. Listen, would you watch? Uh, if I remember, oh, Motley Crue's movie, The Dirt. That was nice. actually, I enjoyed that movie. And uh, it was, it was like, it was another movie that was like a. Based uh, on Shades' life story, Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, and I watched another movie. It was like a psychological horror because I was just in the mood to watch something different. So. Mm. Nice. But uh, yeah. That, Either that's way, the boys. One day. Either way, boys, with yeah. this hockey talk and all these numbers and shit. Either way, it's all I hope for is that they actually show more hockey games on TV because we were just talking about it before we started. And it's like it's kind of it's going to be a little weird hockey being on ESPN again. That's for sure. But I don't, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, just based off of the numbers that they have and like the amount of games that they're saying we'll be able to watch. That sounds pretty good to me. I remember the one year I uh, it was like the first first start of the season it was the first game and um it wasn't it wasn't our market it was like the, i think it was colorado and somebody else and i was like all right i was like oh i want to watch this i haven't watched hockey in fucking four or five months so i put it on angel network and i'm watching like uh in the pens locker room from like 2006 <laughs> yeah and i was network. like dude what the f- like this is the first game of the season and nhl network's not airing it yeah i don't so know why just, nhl just network doesn't it. Yeah, I don't know why NHL Network doesn't air, like air more games. Honestly, it's kind of like a and the, well, I guess the thing that pisses me off more about that is that NHL Network doesn't really come with like the packages. Any like you have to buy it. It's like yeah. you know it doesn't just come with the with the package or whatever. So I don't know. It's kind of annoying too in that sense. But I was also reading that there's a possibility that not only will they have this deal with uh, ESPN, ABC, and all their networks apparently there's still a possibility for a deal with nbc so that's also should be interesting too because if they can generate even more revenue with tv deals that's better yeah especially sure. like hopefully you'll have fans back in attendance so soon hopefully you know if the quicker we get back to uh, full capacity arenas i mean the better it is for the league and the salary cap is we need that shit to go up so yeah, I mean, and especially for the players, too, because they're the ones that are going to be paying all the, you know, the taxes and the escrow or whatever on f- trying to make up for, the, you know, the lost revenue that the league, they end up getting shafted, too. So it really sucks. But yeah, that that's a whole another issue that we can spend an entire podcast episode talking about. But uh, we'd have to do some research. But uh, yeah. the main thing is that it's more money and it's definitely increase the, uh, the salary. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. And, and it's great uh, that, you know, hopefully more people watch. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. I mean, the sport needs viewership. So, I mean, every time you go into a bar or a pub or whatever, they have what ESPN on. That's the number one thing. No one's putting on NBC. No, I mean, unless it's during the playoffs. But, um, yeah, like no bar is going to have the NHL network just like regularly. Yeah. Like, it's always going to be ESPN or something. For sure. And nobody's going to put fucking NBC SN. Unless you're in like fucking Tennessee and there's some NASCAR yeah. race on or some shit and it's on NBC SN. Exactly. <laughs> Go in a circle. Go in a circle. Advertise stuff. Advertise stuff. Go in a circle. What is that from? Family Guy. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah. Well, I was near the last episode and you did like a SpongeBob skit. <laughs> oh, yeah. The. Uh, da, 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 oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, glad you want to do it like a full one. Yeah, I don't know. You, you, you're all nah, nah, I'm only gonna do that once. Good, I, I had to do it just for the debut. So now, <laughs> when the Rangers win the Stanley Cup, hopefully within the next five years, Chase is gonna get hammered. Yeah. I okay. will drink a beer on camera and I will do something pretty crazy for that debut. So, what are you gonna butt chug it? Uh, Bought funnel, yeah, do it, <laughs> butt chug the beer. <laughs> that'll get us some viewership maybe yeah, we'll get on espn that, that'll that also get us flagged off of like every platform ever no nah. <laughs> no nah, you can do way worse stuff on the internet trust me i've seen it well i mean i'd probably get flagged off. we'd probably get kicked off of youtube for that maybe 
Ah, some fucked up shit out there on YouTube. Yeah, but there's also like not butt chugging. I have family that listens to this podcast. Can we please change the subject? Oh, I wouldn't have said that. (laughs) All right. No, it's even better. Yeah. Change. Let's get into the Rangers talk. Yeah. All right. So let me. So four games have happened. Just some quick notes because I know you guys don't want to mention or talk about the first Pittsburgh game. I mean, the game against Pittsburgh on March 9th, which was the first of the four. Just uh, some quick notes on it, just because uh, Lemieux and Hayek were scratched. Uh, Johnson and Blackwell were in. Keith Kincaid got the start. Of course, Jack Johnson, of all people, scores the first Rangers goal. And basically, shit hit the fan. Everything fell apart. Rangers Shades. ended up losing. And uh, Shades, didn't didn't Gorgiev actually get the start against? Didn't he? I think Kincaid came in relief, no? uh or no don't quote me on that i'm just asking no 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 i wasn't that no 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 i maybe but that's uh, i'm pretty sure kincaid got the start let me just uh i can easily double check that right now uh tuesday against penguins the ninth uh no kincaid played the whole game okay gotcha so yeah other than that uh like i said johnson scores everything falls apart but uh Buchnevich got robbed on two late chances, and I mean robbed. And uh, Rangers were credited with 58 hits, so our boy Brian would be proud. Yeah, the Rangers were throwing a lot of body, and they actually seem to really do that. And for some reason, in Pittsburgh's arena in particular, because I'm pretty sure that's like multiple times. And Shades, you know what? That's on my. That's actually my fault. Yeah, no, you're right. Kincaid ended up coming in in the next game, and that was the first game against Boston. I just realized I was reading my notes thinking that I was looking at the Pittsburgh game, but I wasn't. So that's, that's all good. good. Only good. Jack Johnson could score in one game and get cut the next day. But the following <laughs> week. Yeah, he did have a cannon in that game. And I'm pretty sure he, like, before that goal, he was, like, playing awful that game, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he plays uh, awful every game. I, listen. I'm not going to disagree with you there. In that game, uh, the biggest takeaway for me is, like, just giving up really terribly timed goals. Like we gave up a goal with like a couple seconds left. And then we gave up that goal. Like Kapanen ended up like deking the shit out of like the entire team and scoring. That was he, the, are you talking about the shorthanded one that made it too well? I don't even remember. Or was that a different point. one? Cause that goal needs to be brought up. Cause that basically like killed the bench for the Rangers. So yeah, it was one of those ones where you want to just move on. I mean, yeah. we ended up losing that, what, 4-2, I think, right? We ended up uh, – yeah, 4-2. Yeah, Crosby got the empty netter, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And actually, speaking of – I got to bring this up because this is fucking hilarious for me. So, you know, obviously, like, the deal with ESPN was announced, and I'm watching Get Up, which is a show on ESPN. It's usually on at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. So they're talking about the Dak Prescott deal. They didn't even mention anything about the NHL on this particular episode. And then literally like out of nowhere, they just start talking about the Pittsburgh Rangers game. They go over it briefly. Like this is Mike Greenberg. He starts talking about it. They show no highlights from the game whatsoever. This is like a 20 second thing. And then he just talks about Pittsburgh taking the lead. And then they show Crosby get the empty net goal, and that was it. It was like 20 seconds. It was the worst hockey coverage I've ever seen in my entire life. I had to bring that up. I'm sorry. That, that was my only other notes I had on this game. Other than that, I mean, the third period aside was pretty good, and the one shot Pittsburgh gets is an empty netter. But, of course, Woj, do you have anything to say about the game, or would you like to move on to the next? Um, no, I think – I personally wish that I just watched Get Up the next morning instead of watching that full time. <laughs> I don't really hear Greenberg, Greenberg talk about for about <laughs> 20 seconds about, oh, yeah, they lost. He's an empty net goal. That's all I needed to see. Yeah, it was uh, brutal. Oh, wait. Uh, that shorthanded goal to make a tuna, I mixed the games up. That was the next game against Boston. Yeah, I don't think that was a shorthand goal. Yeah. So, anyway, anyway. so uh, right. on to Boston, a 4 0 shutout loss. Uh, Ryan Callahan was uh, in the studio analyzing the game. That was pretty cool to see him again. Yeah, and he didn't he's, hold back either. He was fucking ripping the Rangers apart in the first intermission. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. he's aged a little bit, but uh, still, I loved him as captain of the Rangers and hope he's having a happy retirement so far. He's like, he's kind of dry as like an analyst, honestly. Like he's yeah. not like, 
I don't know. He's kind of like boring, but then again, some of them are all, most of them are like that anyway, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It but is yeah. nice. It is nice to see like a familiar face to be doing. The, oh no, uh, for sure. It's cool. I'd actually rather him be doing the Ranger games than on NBCSN. Yeah. So I don't know if he's sticking around for a while or not. Cause I think he's been doing the last couple games. No. Uh, I don't think he did last nights, but he, he did like the, the two games before. You might yeah. on last night. I'm not sure. I didn't watch the uh, animations. Yeah. Just yeah. Just a quick other things about this game. One, a disappointing thing: the Rangers' hit total dropped from 58 all the way to 20. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's not. <laughs> and and honestly, against Boston, that is definitely not going to get the job done. I mean, when you saw them lose in the Stanley Cup final, the number one reason why is because, well, one Bennington, but besides Bennington. The St. Louis Blues were just throwing bodies on them, man, that whole series. Like, when you can play physical on them, then it's a whole other thing. And speaking of hitting, I had to bring this up, too. This is probably, for me at least anyway, I, that had to be true, but one of Truba's worst games of the season. I mean, there's just times where he, like, he always tries to step up and make hits. But sometimes he doesn't like, not only does he not even get that big of a hit, he also just like compromises position and then doesn't get back into position and then loses his guy and they end up scoring goals in front. And that's happened now. Like that happened last night yeah. again. It happened in the Boston game, the first game against Boston. I mean, the second game against Boston was one of his best games of the season. So it's like, for me, it's like the, he has been probably the most, in, one of the most inconsistent players on the team all season. And obviously as fans, we're going to be more critical on him because he's making the most, you know, most money on the core. So actually, Brendan, I got a question for you. Do you think that is partially his fault, partially coaching fault or the coaching staff's fault? Do you think that's part of their strategy at times to do what he did? No. I mean, I think that's his style of play. Like, I think he throws a lot of body. I just don't – I just, sometimes I think he's just, like, not opportune with, the, yeah. like, the times that he decides he's going to step up, like, just doesn't make the most sense for playing yeah. defense. It's tough with those big guys, too, because even – um, I think it was last night, it might even have been the Boston game, too, that Keandre Bill is also one of those taller guys, and he stepped up, like, a bunch of times, and he just did not get beat, and he doesn't get back with enough. Yeah. I mean, so, to be honest with you, I haven't really been a big fan of that pairing. Per se. Yeah, I, I think it's too much. It is. I mean, they're they're good skaters, but they're just you know when it comes to certain positioning and, and uh, times in their own zone, they just don't look that great. Yeah, and then what? Just to bounce off of what you were saying too, what was just like they're talking about Miller trying to develop his offensive game, but at the same time, Truba's not necessarily a, a defensive defenseman no. to begin with. So he's trying to make plays on offense. Miller's trying to make plays on offense, and in that first game, it was kind of a disaster. But then it didn't. This is what's so confusing because in the next game, it's like literally they were the two most dominant players out there on the ice besides Panarin. So yeah. it, it's so confusing. But you want, Brennan, you want to know why they were dominant that game? Because I wasn't home to watch the game and I forgot to record it. That's <laughs> Shades why. Jinx. Shades jinx. Shades jinx. But there is a lot. There is some other stuff though we had to bring up in this first game against Boston. Um, Rangers who they I'm reading this power play stats here for a second penalty kill this is brutal well the penalty kill hasn't well, been well the last couple of games has been brutal but up into that Boston game it was, and I was I was uh, referring to the power play that specific game oh yeah the power play it was fucking terrible. terrible I mean the penalty kill kind of slipped up a little bit last night but I don't know it's over the happen. last like over the previous like 17 games they had been over like 90 percent so yeah which is crazy. And then what we were saying, Shade's bad start and Kincaid ended up coming into the game in relief of Gorgiev, who, you know, I don't know if we can necessarily blame some of those goals on him, but I get, I get the change in goaltending needed. I mean, two of them were just kind of pass cross empty nets and then uh, two shots from the point, which doesn't really seem to be his strength. Well, let's move on to the positive, pretty much the only positive note on that day. Kravtsov's KHL season ended and he is from what I read in Rick Carpinello's article or if it wasn't the latest one it was the one of the latest ones he is actually currently in New York yeah quarantining 
So according to the article, it said seven days. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask the question. Do you think he's going to go straight to the Rangers or do you think since he's going to have to take a week off due to quarantining, do you think they'll send him to Hartford to play a few games to try and get back up to game speed and then call him up? What do you guys think? Um, I think he's ready to go right now. He was just in the playoffs and he's doing really well. Uh, KHL is a different league. And I don't know where you can rank the NHL, AHL, KHL, but um, I'd probably say and it, KHL is like a 1A to the AHL from what I think. Um, because it's a full league. It's not just a bunch of either two-way guys or, or guys trying to get back in the league. But I, I think he's ready to go right away. It wouldn't hurt to give him some games in the AHL, but I, we got a few, like, fourth-line guys that are playing up and down the lineup. It wouldn't hurt to bring him in. Yeah, I, I think I think we're going to bring him in right away, too, especially right now with a couple guys on the COVID protocol list. I get, you know, we don't really know when they're coming back, hopefully sooner than later. I don't know. I mean, I think the pro the COVID protocol list thing is going to be a lot quicker than it was in the past. Mark Andre Fleury was on the protocol list literally like two days before a game, and then ended up playing in that next game. So, I think hopefully those guys will be back sooner than later. Fox, Buchnevich, and uh, Phil DiGiuseppe. But yeah. yeah, I think I think he's going to come over right away too. At this point, I feel like we're kind of on the edge, like. It's kind of a little bit of a long shot for us to make the playoffs. Like we need to really play filthy to end the season. And I think I'd rather just see him play at this point. Like there's no harm in actually him playing. Um, he seems like he had a pretty good season based on the numbers. He had 16 goals and 24 points in 49 games. So it's not yeah. too bad. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, I think it was, I think he had four four points in five playoff games. I think it was two goals, two assists. Nice. So, hey, that's good. Now, the only thing is, like, who's going to play with? And I see all over Twitter people bitching and complaining about him probably playing with Howden in the third or fourth line, which, I mean, I know people don't like Howden, but we have a top two penalty kill in the league, and he's a big piece of it. Uh, he doesn't put up numbers and stuff, which I'm assuming people want to see more since he's a young, young player, but may not just be his role. It's may not what he's comfortable with, but I mean, if you could play him, I mean, get him the third line minutes or fourth line. I don't think you should get shot the second second line right away, especially a bunch of guys this year have been trying to play for that spot in the lineup. Um, but I could see him probably being him, Howden, and Gautier, or Rooney and uh, Gautier probably, maybe Blackwell, if he has to get moved down. Well, here's the thing. I think Kravtsov is specifically a right winger. He so. is. He's played center in the World Juniors games. Uh, they can uh, – Charlie Rensk, he was, a, he was also a right wing. But nice. most likely he'll probably play right wing, you're correct. Nice. Yeah, so that, that was basically the highlight of that game. But uh, on to the 13th against Boston Bruins, boys. Well, Shades, first big thing, obviously, we got Panarin back into the lineup. And holy yes, shit, does that make a difference? Oh, wait, just a real quick, just uh, with the guys being on the protocol list, since we brought that up, that doesn't necessarily mean they have COVID. So they no, could potentially, yeah, they could potentially be back by the end of the week, which yeah, with how the team's looking right now, that's wonderful. But Panarin back against Boston, which we desperately needed him back. Uh, Kincaid got the start in this game. Uh, of course, no, wait, was this the game I missed? Yes. Yes, this, yeah, was this the is the game, game you missed. missed, but Kincaid was in net. He had a shutout. Rangers won 4 nothing. Yeah. And just a quick uh, stat. Here you go. Here's one for you. Kincaid's first NHL win since Halloween of 2019 and his first shutout since November 15th of 2018. Wow. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I mean, Kincaid really didn't have to do much this game. I mean, I, I honestly can't even think of a chance that Boston had that he had to even make like honestly the best chance of the game was Kincaid coming out to play the puck and shooting it into the Rangers guy and almost putting in his own net for blowing yeah. a shutout with like <laughs> seven minutes left uh, and I got one more stat for you it was the Rangers first shutout at Boston since our yeah, boy since Henrik Lundqvist in the 2011-12 season wow. where of course lot. Lundqvist had 42 saves because when didn't he face 40 shots Jeez. Yeah, that's but 
yeah, I mean, we listen, we allowed 18 shots on goal, and uh, that really sums the game up. I mean, Boston is pretty simple. It's like if you can just shut down that top line, they're not really going to get much going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless the other lines are going. <laughs> but they haven't been going. That's the problem with them this season. Yeah, no, they definitely started off slow, but they're uh, they're coming around. Woj, your thoughts? Um, yeah, no, it's a good defensive game, I think. Um, Clay, Kincaid played pretty well. Every time I look at his stance, it looks so fucking weird. Like, I can't tell if he's stand up. He's kind he's of like a tall. Dryden, in, or if I can't tell if he's, like, trying to do butterfly and just take it down. He's kind of tall, too, right? Or am, yeah. or am I just making that up? I feel like he's a pretty big guy. No, he's a bit taller, I think. I think he's, like, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, maybe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's tough. It's funny. I really thought Eeyore was, like, going to be out, like, maybe a week. feels like it's been, like, a month now. But, like, uh, supposedly the injury's not bad. But uh, since last night, neither goal has been playing that great other than the shutout. Um, so, you wonder. I think Georgiev's playing the next game, but you got to wonder what's the what's going to happen here. Who's going to see if Georgiev stays or if Kincaid just gets sent back down to the taxi squad. But who knows? Yeah, I mean, quick thoughts on that. I feel like at this point, like, if it's b- even borderline could affect him long-term, Shesterkin, I would just consider him a wash for the season. What, Like, why are we going to rush him back? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Now make sure he's 100% before you get him back into a game. That's my yeah, thoughts I, on I it. I just don't think it makes much sense because even if the Rangers play so good and we end up making the playoffs – and he, and he rushes back and he ends up getting hurt again, then he's really going to be no help anyway. So, yeah. I don't know. I'd rather I'd rather him just take as much time as he needs <clears> at this <throat> point and because, you know, it, like, it's going to be – we're going to have to win a lot of games to get this fourth spot, and it's, it's yeah. going to be interesting. I'd say it'd be different if we had started out shitty and we started to pick it up here and there like one by one, but it looks like every other game it's a different team. It's like either they don't know what they're doing out there, they're playing like shit, or they're shutting teams out and like they're they're going off. Yeah, I mean, but like you said, if that's the case, who knows what we do at this season? You can just chalk it up to a loss and you you move on. But yeah, like you were just saying, it's just inconsistency is really the biggest yeah. thing. I mean, even in this game, I mean, we were just talking about Trubo before Miller. Miller gets a pass. He's a rookie. Yeah, you know, he's gonna play it's like gonna this tough. occasionally, but for me, it's like. On the defensive end, I mean, with Fox, with the way Fox and Lindgren have been playing, I would consider them almost like the leaders on defense. But with Truba's contract, I mean, he's always going to have, he's and he's always going to hold somewhat more of a responsibility defensively, especially with the contract that he has. So, you know, in this game, he played amazing. It was one of his best games of the season after one of his worst games of the season, and then he follows it up with a worse game, even worse of a performance. Then the first Boston game, and that was last night. Um, I guess we'll just go right into that game because – Hold on, I got uh, – That I game got, was a dumpster fire. I got another stat for you. That was the first time since 1958 that the Rangers had at least a four-goal shutout against Boston. Jesus. Jesus. Who the fuck finds these stats, dude? I don't know, but I, I start does, to, I, I, I start appreciate to fucking their hard question work. them sometimes. Like, Shane's just making this shit up. That's I am I really mean. not. I am really not. Who the fuck comes up with this shit? It's ridiculous. And if these stats are made up, I'm not the one making them up. So, <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, you guys see in one of the intermissions? I forgot what it was. They celebrated the, uh, the, the Asian uh, player, the first Asian player for the Rangers or in the NHL. What was his name? Something Wong. I forgot what his first name was. I didn't see this. You didn't see it? I looked uh, it up. I was like, let me go to Hockey DB. Let me see how many games he played because I had never heard of him. He played one game. And I was like, oh shit. Pretty interesting, but you can tell it was old. I think it was like the fifties or something like he played. So yeah. that's probably wrong anyway. No way they keep track of this stuff. But I thought that was pretty cool. Hey, somebody does the work. So Are you talking about your stats or him? <laughs> Both. Yeah. <laughs> somebody See, finds the stuff. This is the thing about the somebody stats. I was gonna bring this up. It's like who the hell is gonna look that up? Like, you know how long that would take to look that up, dude? That's literally 62 years of hockey. Yeah. Or my math, terrible. Is That's that probably enough? a span of, like, 40 years of really shitty hockey we have to look out for. Dude, there's probably, like, a specific database somewhere that has, like, all these things that you can easily find them. Sure. That 
like the public just doesn't know the website or whatever. What's That's got to be the case. Like the vast you gotta be majority me. of the public just doesn't know the website. But uh, one final thing about that Boston game. This, this was a very interesting stat, actually. Uh, Keandre Miller, as I'm reading my notes, I got two more stats, one after this one. Uh, Keandre Miller ha- is, he's been on the ice for a team high 23 even strength goals. Oh, that's nice. That's a pretty interesting stat. And the, the other one, the last one, Miller's second goal of the season, which he scored in that game, that was the first goal the Rangers scored on Halak in 133 minutes and 14 seconds. Just goes to show you Halak toasts the Rangers every time. And he, and that was a cannon. Yeah. But, uh, all right, well, let's move on to the game against Philly. That disappointment. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, a bunch of guys on the COVID list, Adam Fox, Pavel Buchnevich and Filthy Giuseppe. The Rangers actually did not have a morning skate because of that. And they had a scheduled day off the day before. So canceling a morning skate like that was pretty unheard of but Howden's back in the lineup in this game after being a healthy scratch against Boston which actually ended up being a good move because of the way Boston plays and the way we needed to play to win that game uh of course five minutes five seconds in Flyers make it two nothing and they take advantage of another just awful start for the Rangers yeah. Before I go any further, do you guys have anything you want to say? Uh, I turned the game off after the second second goal. I can't say I blame you. <laughs> Cannot say I blame it's you. So I right. was very close to doing the same. Yeah, Shades. I mean, obviously just not the best start, but it's crazy how they were able to just like completely shut that period out and come out in the second and just fucking dominate. Unfortunately, you know, yeah. we know what ended up being the end result of the game. But um, but obviously even having – this is another one of those games too. It's like Panera and just so many ridiculous plays, goal, two assists. Uh, there's there's a lot of highlights. I mean, good things to take away from this game minus the loss. Um, Tarmo Reunion makes his debut. Did All I just right. blame that name? Uh, no? You were pretty close actually, uh, Reunion. Rain Union. Yeah, I can't blame you. You were close. You were close. Sam Rosen. That's Sam Rosen. That's, well, that's the problem. Name. That's true. I was you never probably, know. I was probably following what he said. But Shades, he makes he steps into the lineup. He makes his debut. Weird number. Not gonna lie. I'm not a big fan of it. What is, is he wearing? Number 50? again? Fifty one. Yeah, fifty one. That's that weird. That is a weird De, number. Dejan Boy. But uh, are you talking Shades, about David Dejarnay? <laughs> same thing. He makes his uh, NHL sure, debut think. last night, and he. Gives a hell of a pass to Panarin, yeah. who just takes an absolute cannon of a one-timer. It literally looked like they they were probably playing a lot of NHL in quarantine with that goal. Yeah. To be honest. But uh, stupid. Pass yeah, I mean, couple goals. couple notes. Shades going back to those first two goals. I mean, Truba tries to. I don't know if you really can blame this on Truba, but I'm just going to blame it on him anyway. He decides that you know nobody comes back for him which is also on Miller. It's also on every forward that was on, especially the center and or whoever was closest to being back. Nobody gets back. Instead of going to the net, Truba decides, all right, I'm going to do his classic step up, try to make a hit. Doesn't stop the puck. Doesn't make a hit. Just easy tapping in front. So, I mean, there was another play in this game with, with Truba that I just, you know, later in the game when they ended up tying it on the power play, he just like sometimes he's just so lost in front. Like I, I don't get it. Like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. That was an absolutely disgusting pass by Voracek to Drew in front. But I yeah. mean, Trouble was not even like he would, dude. He wasn't even facing in the right direction. I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing out there? Yeah, it was rough. But I just want to bring this stat up because you know, you know me. I love my stats. But uh, Ray Uninen, got his name right, thank God. Uh, he became the first Rangers defenseman to get a point in his NHL debut since Stu Bickle. 
right? Stu Bickle. Yeah, Stu yeah, Bickle on December 20th, yeah. 2011. So that's pretty cool. First first Rangers rookie D-man to get yeah. a point in his debut in 10 years. That's pretty pretty damn good. You yeah. think he should stay in the lineup for the next game? Uh, I saw the first shift. He, he came out. Not first shift, but his first shift after like a few minutes. He came out. Was on the like broken player and made a pass out, and then he came off directly after. And then I didn't really notice him as much until the goal, until he hit his assist. Uh, I mean, listen, he he didn't look too bad to me, in my opinion. Yeah, he, I would. Yeah, he had a couple of nice shots on goal. He was passing well. I mean, yeah, to I'd be say, honest with you, I'd rather. I mean, there's probably some other people I put in put in before him, but I mean, whatever. If he's our only option, I'd say give him another shot. I I would start him next game. Yeah, if you got a point in your first game, I figured you know. No, for sure. Give it to him. So like he earned it. Something I want to bring up though, this game actually, and it's kind of a half good, half bad. It started off better, ended terribly. But uh Julian Gauthier, I mean, he scores a filthy goal. Uh, you know, just drive just blows past the Flyers defense off a beautiful pass. And uh he ends up scoring, and then later in the game, he takes two really bad high sticking penalties that end up both being goals. Yeah, and uh, it's like, damn, you know, Can't it's like you, break. you wanted, you felt like you were so happy for him, and then he ends up taking those bad high sticking penalties, which I didn't even realize that they could review a high sticking penalty. I'm also guessing yeah. that they're reviewing that for also for diving purposes. I'm well, assuming. it looked like Drew dove a little bit. I mean, I mean he, it looked like he hit him in the visor. This, it hit him up here. It clipped him, like, on the top of the visor on his helmet. And he, like, flung his, his head back and threw a stick in the air and just fell down the ice. He probably fucking cut himself with doing that motion. Yeah. But it, either then, way. Uh, and then the one I think he got on Connect Me, he, like, went down on a knee, threw his arm out to try to look not to lose puck. And the guy on Lucky and just kind of rode his stick up and hit uh, you know, um, Connect Me right in the face. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was that was kind of a little bit of a sell job, I would say. I mean, some were, some people were saying that that hit that Smith drew, uh, Smith threw on Drew was also dirty. I, no, I just I, had to, he was looking the other way, Drew. I don't think it was either because he saw him last minute, and honestly, like Smith had him lined up, and then Drew kind of like went to the side, trying to get out of yeah. the way of it, and because of that, it ended up looking like it was knee on knee. But to me, that didn't look didn't look dirty. Yeah, so that's the number one thing is that when you're a player and you cut to the middle, you got to be aware because you're going to get laid out 10 and 10 times, depending on what defense is out there. And Smith's going to throw the body. So, I mean, that's, that's on Giroud to, to look where he was making the pass and then kind of check last second to see where Smith was. And he just oh, yeah, for sure. goes right into him. And if we're, when Smith – I mean, Smith is going to throw the body like you are saying. So, when he sees yeah. somebody's coming across the middle, especially somebody like Giroud, he's going to try to murder them. So, yeah. But uh, let's move on. We got to talk Actually, about hold that. on. I just want to talk about that real quick for a second because uh, what's his face? Was it Nolan Patrick? Like, jumped Smith right after? Oh, and too. somehow, yeah. like, somehow the Flyers got assessed two penalties and Smith got a penalty. And I'm like, Well, we ended what up the with hell? the power play off of that. So. Yeah, but I'm just like, how does Smith get a penalty on that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I think, I think his – yeah, he – I mean, he did get jumped a little bit, but I think he – I know Nolan Patrick came up to him, and he – I think – he didn't take his gloves off yet. I think Smith was getting ready to take his gloves off. Did he drop them? I wasn't sure. I think he did. So, I, I think remember. that's what he got it for, because they would have given him an offsetting minor as a roughing or something, and then that's what the – that's why he went off. But, I mean, I'm glad – I'm glad Voracek stepped in for Nolan Patrick because he's been getting head injuries. He was out for, like, most of the season or all of it last year. And he's a he's a second overall pick. And yeah, he compared to the draft class that they have, like, it's him, he share one and two, and then the next three or four guys have been going off. They're, they're stars on their teams. So, good thing he, he didn't get to fight Smith because he would have knocked him the fuck out. Yeah, the, uh, the refs were uh, not good that night because they – clearly missed two delay a game penalties also so one being on the rangers too (laughs) on smith as a matter of fact while we were in a penalty kill i'm pretty sure yeah but when that happened i was just like all right you know what that makes up for whatever bad call had just happened so the refs refs will end up making up for it one way or another 
But yeah, it's funny how they make up for it sometimes by not calling something obvious. Oh, yeah. For sure. They know funny it. how that works. Shades, let's talk about this overtime briefly. I mean oh, you friggin'. First what of all, this that that to me is like the epitome of what three on three overtime has become now. It's basically just okay, we're gonna come in the zone. Ah, we don't have anything. We still have the puck. We'll just leave, trap the other team in there. We'll skate around for about three minutes of the overtime, not even get a shot on goal. But we're gonna just trap the other team in the zone and not be able to do anything. And that's basically what ended up happening, except that Rangers ended up blowing it and you know the Flyers ended up getting a change and Anyway, there's a whole play that ends up happening. Kincaid has to play that puck. I mean, obviously, otherwise it's an easy breakaway anyway. But he plays it, and he he tries to pass it up to Panarin with Veracek there, and Voracek just – he reads the play. Panarin tr- said that he tried to chip it past him, yeah. hit off a shin pad. Voracek ends up getting a breakaway, just decent the shit out of Kincaid, and they end up winning. So it yeah. was a rough way to end it, to be even, honest. Even before that, though, I was seeing on Twitter, Rangers dominated that overtime. It was just like – dominated what they didn't shoot <laughs> i mean we possessed the puck if that's what they meant by dominated but we didn't yeah, actually possession possession chance. wise they were good but i mean like dude i don't remember them getting a single shot on goal in that overtime yeah they they held on to the puck but they didn't they didn't actually do anything with it so yeah exactly worse. they should have kept doing it until the last minute and then try putting it on because yeah. there was no way philly was getting to the bench to get a change and all those guys were gassed no, I mean, dude, that whole goal could have been avoided if uh, Kincaid just put more mustard on that pass. Yeah. Yeah, I did see that online too. But that was uh, that was another one. Obviously, you know, it, it's weird with Kincaid because he also made some nasty saves at the end of that game. You know. Yeah, which is save and which is unfortunate, but so. then again, he also main reason why we lost the game yeah. because because of that yeah. play. I that mean, whole thing is I that also, we shouldn't. It's, oh, you it's, go, oh, sorry, Walsh. I was going to say another thing too is like it's on Kincaid, but it's kind of also on Panarin. He was just lazy on that. That's just lazy. Like when you're the last guy back, get the fuck back, dude. Don't try to do it. Like don't try to chip it for an odd man rush. Just come to the puck and get the pass. He even said it himself. Like it was a miscalculated play on his end too. So yeah. Um, this is the second time this has happened. And, you know, Georgiev did it the first time playing the puck. Um, and I, this is the game D'Angelo got kicked, uh, got, you know, hit, um, and then kicked off the team, basically. But um, we really shouldn't be having the goalies make a, make a play in overtime, especially when there's so much space on the ice. One little slip up from a goalie making the pass, and it's hard to make a pass to the goalie stick. They're in the NHL, they could do it. But, you know, it could be a, just a freak thing. And, you know, next thing you know, that like that happens, that goal goes, that goes in. Voracek gets the breakaway because yeah. the the pass wasn't enough. I'll tell you one thing: that shit ain't gonna happen if Lundqvist was in the net because he wouldn't have fucking played the puck. <laughs> he would have launched it. <laughs> he would have just shot it in his own net somehow, or he would have iced it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, would have just completely missed Panarin. There was a. I had a couple other notes, not on this game. I'm ready to move on from the Rangers. I had a couple other notes for the NHL, actually, boys. Okay, good, because uh, I'm sick so. of talking about the Rangers after that game. Yeah, you know, there was too. a whole, there was actually a thing with the Rangers that I wanted to bring up outside of the games that kind of got, like, washed under the rug. I don't know if you guys saw this. I'm going to bring this up real quick. So, unfortunately, I don't know. I'm sure you guys saw the news that Mark Pavlik passed yeah. away, you know, former gold medal winner, 1980 Olympic team, and also former Rangers player. Um there was an article that came out uh, with the New York Post, of course. They love bashing the Rangers for some reason. But uh, Barry Beck, who played with John Davidson and then Mark Pavlik on the team, he had called out the Rangers for not supporting. I don't know if you saw this, but. I he, actually, I did. Yeah, he so he, uh, he was like getting on the Rangers and he was getting on like on John Davidson. And he was like, oh, you know, John, da- I, John Davidson was too busy. You know, I didn't fucking answer my emails. And it was kind of like making like a big stink and Davidson actually had to like speak on it because it was starting to get like, they were kind of just, he was talking a lot of shit basically, but he was able to like calm him down. But I don't know. It was a sad story. I had to bring it up for a second because I just kind of, it was, it was starting to like blow up and they kind of, they kind of like swept it under the rug kind of, I didn't really hear much about it, but. The question I have about that is 
like how much do you realistically expect them to do when they're literally in the middle of like a four or five game road trip? I mean, I would say that falls more on the NHL and the USA hockey than it does fall on the Rangers, to be honest, yeah. because he didn't just play for the Rangers. He played for other teams. And yeah, I would say because of like the stature of him being on that Olympic team, like USA hockey probably could have did more on their end. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't blame like the NHL or, or the Rangers for not doing anything. Like it, it, it sucks, but like, so the funny thing is, so not funny, but he definitely had some sort of like CTE issues. Definitely. Because of, especially back then guys fought all the time yeah. and he probably, you know, probably got hit a lot too. I didn't remember watching him play, but um, it's just, it's such like wishwashy thing to like talk about, like, especially now, like we're trying to make the game better and it definitely is. And they're doing more now to, to help out people. But I think at that point he was just too far gone. He needed uh, like, I think a couple of years ago, the story came out that he um, like he break into his neighbor's house or something, attacked him. That obviously wasn't on him. That's on his issues that he has from from playing from post concussion syndrome. But yeah, it's, um, it's tough to see what they're gonna do. I mean, it's yeah. a touchy situation. Yeah. Well, a more positive note anyway. That was one of the things I had to bring up because it didn't involve the Rangers. Yeah. Uh, on a more positive note, Sound Yandel, thousand games played. Thousand games. What a beast! Former Ranger had to what bring a guy. it up. They. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but they hit. Spin, uh, spin chicklets made uh song t-shirts everybody had the song t-shirts on all oh, the panthers oh, pretty boy. awesome and also they and, gave uh, him a golf cart you know yeah that was sick and uh, also in usa hockey news patrick kane also hit a thousand games last week which is pretty cool yeah. Yeah. um the fighting has been getting insane this year i mean the fighting has definitely yeah. come back awesome. in the NHL. i love to see it don't know if you guys see his must fight, must see fight. Uh, last night's game, uh, Calgary Edmonton, Brett Ritchie, and uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Kyra. Kyra. Cairo. Oh, Cairo. Chujar Kara. Yeah, Kara. dude, he got knocked out by Brett Ritchie. He was bad, really yeah. bad, dude. Just right hand, right across the face. The dude didn't even know where he was. But uh, Calgary, man, they're really stepping their game up. They hired Sutter as coach. 3-0 and start with him as coach. And uh interesting thing about him is he actually – he had already coached them yep. back in 2004 when they when they should have won the Stanley Cup final. Uh, so, interesting. Ar- arguably mm-hmm. should have won. Yeah, yeah, 2004, what a year. I was six. <laughs> hey, listen, man. That was a sick cup final too. Fuck. I remember watching that shit when it was on. Yeah, but – isn't it kind of funny how they Calgary fired their coach after like a seven to two or seven to three win? I guess they already made it up in their mind that they were going to fire him. I you guess, know. but but uh, shades, you want to bring this up too, and well, one you want to bring up the Sonkman's team, Panthers, and Jesus, they've been on a rampage. No, I don't think anybody expected that one. Definitely not me. You know they're first in, the, in their division. I know. Right now. I know. Yeah, dude, and Minnesota has been on a rampage yeah. too. I mean, Minnesota, obviously, with Kaprasov has been – I mean, I guess for me anyway, it looks like he's going to win the rookie of the year. I mean, how does he not with the turnaround that mm-hmm. Minnesota's had solely based off of his play and fucking Zuccarello on top of it? Guy's been a rampage. Guy's been on a rampage. They've both been on a rampage. I got a yeah. question for you. Yeah. Kaprasov is 24 ah, or 23? I actually don't know. Okay, so he's one of those two ages. I'll get to my question now. Do you think there should be an age limit cutoff for players eligible for rookie of the year? Because apparently that's become an issue. No, I don't. I don't see no. why. I mean, Kubali did it last year, and he played in like a Czech league, I think. Right? Did he? I think he won it last year because he had like thirty or forty goals or something. So he had a, he played in the Czech league and it's it's professional. Um, yep. KHL is a little bit different. That's also a professional league and, and he played there. But like Panarin won it McDavid's year. McDavid got hurt, um, so that's why Panarin got it. Shades, um, my only thing. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it, it is weird because I think you could put an age limit, maybe twenty five, because that starts to seem like all right. Now he's like a, a full adult. I think twenty five and under, it's solid. 
the only thing with that shades is like really what what is the argument against it like experience in professional hockey but not in the nhl like yeah but i'm saying like what are they arguing like what's the big deal if they're considering it as rookie season if it's his first year in the nhl like what's the argument like oh okay because he's He's more ready and he's gonna win the award like okay here's the thing like if a guy who was like 27 playing his rookie season in the nhl and he won it wouldn't you be a little tight no i mean it's rookie it's his first season i mean what? Yeah. See, but then again, I don't think I don't think someone that old is, like won it. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I don't think I so either. either. I'm exactly. just like, yeah, I'm just like trying to uh, give a hypothetical example. That would honestly kind of piss me off a little bit, though. If it, if guy was like 27. I mean, honestly, dude, I have no, like... dude. I have no problem with Kaprizov winning it, but like, if a guy was like on the other side of like 26, then I start to get a little pissed off. Like shades, I see your point, but I feel like it's like it's probably a rarity that it would even happen because listen, if somebody is fucking 27 and they're just making their debut in the NHL, like, I don't know how good they're going to be. Like how good are they really going to be to win the rookie of the year? Yeah. Kaprizov's 23. So he's not too old, but like the the argument you can make is that he's more ready than an 18 year old coming to the league, which like, you know, that's That's reasonable. True. But then, like, a 21-year-old could win it. And it's like, oh, there's only a three-year difference, but he's only 21. It's like, well, this guy's only two years older. So, you know, I think it's whoever's, whoever's more ready or has more experience in professional hockey. But it's the NHL. It's the, the award for the first-year NHL player. I think uh, I think it's I think it's fine. I don't, they really need to change it. Yeah, no, I'm not advocating for a change. Just I saw it was an issue on Twitter. Yeah, of all places, and I just and thought I would people, ask you guys about it. People got to complain about something, Shades. Yeah, because who, who else much. would win it? Who else is going to win it this year? I mean, Caprizo is awesome. Well, he's apparently he's, they're saying uh, he sparked Minnesota. No one wants to watch Minnesota okay. before. Now I'm trying to watch him. Also, is in the running for it. The goalie for Chicago who's also. Yeah. What oh. in the heck was that? They've they've also been very good. Chicago. Was that you, Woj? Patrick yeah. Kane on a rampage. Jeez. Gotta love it, boys. Just fell uh, oh, your Kevin Hayes Kevin picture Hayes. just fell. That's fitting. That's a that's a fucking celebration in Shades' book right there. Kevin <laughs> on on the dude, he did it. He cast a spell on me. Yeah, but that's all I got, boys. Whoa, do you got any last thoughts <laughs> besides nah, uh, besides Kevin Hayes falling? <laughs> dude, he just I don't know. Guy wants to be near me. I don't. I can't blame him. I mean. Can't really blame the guy. I mean, look at you. That's right. I got. Don't worry. I got you. Uh, well, thank you. We got four games coming up. Uh, one left against Philly to finish out this two-game set. Back to back against Washington in Washington Friday and Saturday, and then home against Buffalo on Monday. Hold up. So oh, hold up. What's up? I have a uh, the picture fell. Oh, just mute oh. yourself real quick. No, no, recording the thing. All right. Sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Hour of editing. All right. All right. You know, I'm going to keep that in there. I don't care. I guarantee you. Yeah, no one watches this anyway. <laughs> You'd be surprised. We get more views on YouTube than you think. Uh, yeah. So I guarantee you 100% Buffalo is going to keep losing and they're going to break their losing streak against the Rangers because that's just how the Rangers season is going. Yeah, w- would you would you boys like to place a wager on this? I will. Okay. Now, this only applies if Buffalo doesn't win a game going into this game. So, w- are you still willing to take the bet? Yeah. Woj, I- you want in on this? What's What's the bet again? So, if Buffalo continues to lose going into the game against us on Monday. I am betting $5 to each of you. Or do you want to raise the stakes up to $10 a piece? Oh, we're in a pandemic. Money's tight. Give it a five. <laughs> All right, five bucks of this. I will bet each one, each one of you $5 that Buffalo will win that game. I, uh, All right. I'm in. The Rangers will win. All right, now remember, like I just oh, said, this only applies I got if it. Buffalo ends their winning, ends and, their massive and losing shades. streak. 
you know why I'm going to take this? Because, well, listen, Taylor Hall sucked anyway, but he also just got hit in the fucking face tonight with a slap shot. So he's definitely not going to be in that game. <laughs> unless oh, unless he comes back. Well, with the way he's been playing this season, I, I don't think that's going to be too think much of a difference. I, I don't think Eichel's going to be playing either, Shades. I'm de- I'll definitely take the Rangers. All right. I'm just doing this to make shit interesting. So with the way the Rangers have been looking lately, I need to need to do something here. But yeah, those four games will be back next Wednesday on March 24th with episode eight of Pucks and Brews. This has been episode seven. I am Michael Sparacino, alongside always Brendan Mulroy on the bottom. If you're watching on YouTube, Brandon Woj to the left. Woj no, aka Woj. And yeah, follow us on all our socials listed in the description below because I don't feel like saying them. <laughs> and I hope I win $10 against both of you. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, Shades, how about this? With the $5, I'll buy a beer for the next episode. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that works. That works. See you, everyone, next week.